Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. You just saw us get a gorgeous delivery of fall annuals. Yes, this is our first delivery of fall annuals here at Creekside Nursery from our friends at Kings and Greenhouses uh, just down the road from us. We love getting our fall annuals from them. They do a great job. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna go through and show you all the different plants that we got. So you sweet folks who are as eager as I am to welcome fall in, you can come shop. They're available now, they're in the greenhouse, they are ready to go. Then I am gonna go ahead and gather up some plants and put together a fall container. I'm gonna show you how easy and exactly you can do this, super, super easy to do a fall container that will literally last you from now until springtime. Because we are in North Carolina, a zone 7B, these plants will, they they're cool weather plants, they love going through the fall, into the winter, spring, will do great. Before we do that, big announcement, we have the online store here at Creekside Nursery, Gardening with Creekside, is open and ready for orders. So you can go right now to Gardening with Creekside. The website is right here for you. We always have it linked in our video description, so you can always click on that. Super simple though, Gardening with Creekside. There you will find a wide variety of items that you can go ahead and order from us. Of course, the big thing is shrubs. We are gonna be selling the Proven Winners shrubs. They're all gonna be quart size, so be looking for that. Um, quart size is, we chose quart size plants because it is a great price point for you, the customer, as far as not only the plant, but as shipping, because of course, the bigger the plant, the more shipping and handling and materials and all of that cost, so the cost goes up. They will ship extremely well as a quart size container and they can go in the ground or if you want to put them in a pot and let them grow out some more and then put them in the ground you can certainly do that as well so you can like i said go there we've got the shrubs we've got um, felcos we have t-shirts um, all sorts of great things that you will find right there you can go ahead and place your orders there one thing with the shrubs because uh, <laughs> It is still warm in North Carolina. We will begin shipping those plants at the end of this month. We're still waiting on the temperatures to uh, change a bit. It is still quite warm. Like I'm in the shade, but I, it, yeah, I've been out and it is sweaty. So we want your plants to arrive in the absolute best condition possible. So they will begin shipping at the end of this month. So this is kind of like a pre-sale for you. If you're ordering t-shirts or felcos, we can go ahead and get those out to you right away. It's just the shrubs, the plants that we're gonna be waiting on. And then come springtime, we will add perennials and annuals to the website. So check that out. We would love to serve you um, anywhere in the lower 48s. So you can check that out. Now, here we go um, in the greenhouse. I'm telling you, I am a firm believer that if we all plant fall loving cool weather, plants and put out our fall decor, the weather will change. What do you think? Can we band together? I mean, look at this little display right here on the end cap that Cece and Randy and Alyssa put together. I absolutely love it. So of course we've got tons of mums, right? All of these are 10 inch mums in those terracotta containers. So you've got mums here. We've got the gorgeous, this is such a popular plant. This is Ms. America and it is a kale does really, really well. Gorgeous, no, mustard. Ms. America is a mustard, I'm sorry. Uh, it is a mustard, and then we have the ornamental cabbages. All of this is gonna do really well through the fall into winter. Popped in some grasses back here, just shows you a beautiful display. Oh, and this is just our first order. We'll have multiple orders throughout in the coming weeks of all of these great um, cool weather plants. So we have the um, cabbage, like this is the color up red, and you will see that it's starting to show a little bit of that color in the inside. As the cooler temperatures arrive, that color will intensify. Um, so they certainly love the colors. So we've got red, and then way down here on the end, I'm going to bet that this is white. So the center, it's a, you can tell the foliage is different. Yep, there it is, there's the tag, color up white. So the cabbages are really fun, they are ornamental and they will do really nicely mixed in to some containers. We do have some of our ornamental annual grasses because they do make great um, thrillers in a container. 
on this side of the greenhouse, we have that Miss America mustard and violas. Um, sometimes people will call them Johnny Jump Ups, but these violas, because the, we have violas and we have pansies, okay? So violas, you will notice that they have very small little flowers on them. The colors will look very much like that of a pansy. Here we have the Color Max Clear Orange, which is just gonna be a um, solid orange. The Lemon Splash, really nice soft yellow. And then um, this is a mix. This is the Lemon Berry Pie Mix with different shades of yellows, blues, purples. And then one of my personal favorites, the Color Max Clear Yellow. So the difference between a pansy and a viola is going to be a couple of things. One, the bloom size. That's what you're gonna notice first, the bloom size. Violas have a much smaller bloom. Pansies have a much larger bloom. Then you're gonna have the difference in the number of flowers or blooms per plant. So violas are gonna have, number-wise, more flowers than a pansy is on the plant. So even though the flowers are smaller, they're more in number, and it gives it a very, very full look. Growing-wise, they all need the full sun. Even in the wintertime, they need the full sun. Uh, consistent moisture, so for us, that is not a problem because, I mean, it rains all the time in the fall and the winter. So I don't, except for maybe like now when the heat is still a little bit warm, I don't go out and like water my pansies or my violas. The rain will take care of it. Um, nice nutrient rich soil. So if you wanna add compost would be great to add to your soil. If you're putting it in the ground, um, go ahead and enrich that with some great compost. If you're gonna be like with me in a container, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. And if you notice that they're starting to, you know, maybe look a little sad or something, liquid fertilizer would be the best. Your time-release fertilizer, that slow-release fertilizer that you put in the ground, the granulars, that is released by temperature. So in the winter time, it's not gonna do you much good. So you're gonna wanna water-soluble fertilize them only if you need to. I really don't ever do that. I just don't because I'm in my soil, therefore I don't have to water-soluble fertilize the plants. Um, violas also, let's go over here and we'll look at the pansies. Violas also will bloom longer in colder weather because if you are a southerner like I am and we plant these pansies and so here are pansies pansies and violas in the um, fall of course they go through all the winter and then they do great in the spring pansies will kind of take a break on their blooming and for us anywhere from like maybe depends on the weather it could be mid-December January early February and then once it starts to warm up just a little bit then they pop back out Violas are more consistent um, bloomers in those colder months. Also, the heat tolerance on the violas is a little bit better. So that makes a huge difference this time of year because it is still quite warm. And when I say it's warm, um, like we're close to 90 degrees today. So Jenny's, Jenny's glistening, especially here in the greenhouse. So that's the main difference between your pansies and your violas. There's not one that's right or wrong. I personally plant more violas because they have just done so really, really well for us. So that is what I'm going to do today. I have got a um, unique stone container that I have picked out. It is um, a special uh, gift for a lady in my life. My, it's my mama's birthday today and my sweet aunt uh, who is in, lives in South Carolina called me up and she said, Jenny, I want you to do something for your mama, a gift from me to her. And so this is what I'm going to do. So we're gonna plant up a unique stone planter filled with all these beautiful new fall annuals for Mimi's birthday. So I'm gonna pick up my plants and then we're gonna to head to the pines in the shade and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to plant a fall container. I have made my selection of plants and the planter. 
So Mama's favorite unique stone color is Ancient Age. So we're gonna go with the Weston Urn in Ancient Age. This is definitely gonna have to go in one of her sunnier spots because as you probably remember, uh, we've done a couple of garden tours with my mama and she has a lot of shade. However, right near her driveway back porch area, she does have, that is where she gets a, a good bit of sun. So all of this will do just fine there. Um, so once we're done, we will go and place it there because <laughs> Unique stone, she's not, a, she's not a wimpy girl. She's nice and heavy. So Jerry and I will go ahead and deliver her. What I have is I did a Ms. America. Y'all, if you've not done the Ms. America, it is fantastic. Not only will it have this beautiful, nice, deep, deep purple color, but it will also get some height. Like it will get a good size. I decided not to use a grass in here because of the size of this container and knowing that Miss America will fill in. So I got Ms. America. Then I went with the red cabbage. Wanted to kind of keep those uh, tones in there together. So I went with the red cabbage. And then I decided to do a little bit of both violas and pansies. The Color Max Clear Yellow. Y'all, I just adore this viola. It is just a literal solid yellow of a flower. It does really, really well. We've done them in the landscape um, in numerous occasions last year, and they will get nice and big. So if you're looking at this and going, you know, that's little. Yes, it's little because it's going to go from now until like April. It's got nice and big. So I got three of those and then I went ahead and went with three of the Colossus Purple with Blotch. So it too is that nice deep deep purple and has a little bit of a yellow throat to it. So that will, um, these two will complement each other quite nicely. So we'll plant this up together. Uh, now, what are the supplies that I need for my container? I always tell you, right, use the biggest container that your space will allow because it holds more soil and that means that your plants are happier, it has more food form, more room for the roots to grow, and then um, less watering on your part. Now, one of the tricks that I learned several years ago from reading in um, a gardening magazine, I believe it was fine gardening. It was either fine gardening or, ga or gardening gate. Those are the ones that I get. And they were talking about the horticulturist and he said that he puts in all of his containers in the bottom one third of the container compost. So I have been doing that for several years now and it works great. So I'm using my land and sea, putting that in the bottom. The reason that you put the compost in the bottom, we're also going to, it's not gardening until you get dirty people. Um, we're also going to top dress the top of the planting with the final dressing of land and sea as well. So got a land and sea in there and then high quality potting soil. The only potting soil that I use in my containers is the Proven Winners uh, potting soil. And uh, my assistant did not open this for me, but I am strong. I can just rip it open just like that. Um, Proven Winners is, in my opinion, for me, the best potting soil out there. It does the absolute best because it has, it drains well, which is especially what I need in the wintertime because we are, tend to be so incredibly wet in the wintertime because we get tons of rain, but it also drains. And I know that sounds weird. Um, it drains, but it holds water. My plants don't dry out. I have found maybe other potting soils. They're just, they hold the water way too much and my plants get waterlogged and it's just, it doesn't go well. So you'll see that I've left a little bit of a lip in my container. I did not bring the soil all the way up to the tippy tippy top. I would prefer to add soil in later once the plants are in as opposed to have to take it out. Plus I'm using two of my plants have, are in six inch containers. So they're gonna make um, a nice, take up some room in here. And that breeze is delicious. Oh, thank you Lord for the nice breeze. We're, we're, we're anticipating, we're slowly like just kind of, we're not slowly, we're ready. We're ready for fall. We are ready for fall. I am ready for the fall, the cool temperatures, 
drier air. Oh, wouldn't it be delicious? All right, so you can see here that the roots are, this is not a root bound plant. So I'm just gonna go in there with my fingers and my thumb and just break it up just a little bit, right? I'm not gonna go in there and completely destroy it. I'm just gonna do that. That's all you need to do. And basically I'm gonna plant my cabbage and my mustard um, in the back beside each other, okay? Um, because those are going to be my interest, my taller ones. So they go back there. We got Ms. America in there. Fun thing about that Ms. America, because I mean, it is a mustard, you can eat it. And it is like other mustards, it is spicy. So it's fun to kind of, you know, if you're in the garden, need a little snack, just pinch you off a little piece and go for it. So here we go with the red cabbage. It does. Jerry's behind the camera, and um, I told him that in the greenhouse, that the cooler the te as the temperatures cool down, the color intensifies. We've got a little bit of red in there in the heart of the cabbage, um, but it will definitely um, intensify with the cooler temperatures. Yet another reason why it needs to hurry up and get cool. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I may have too many pansies and violas which is fine, right? So I'm gonna try to play off of my colors here and just fill in right here on the lip. Uh, because this is a gift from my mama, I wanna go ahead and make it as full as it possibly can and look good now. Now, not as full, full as it possibly can. I'm sure I could slam more plants in here, but I do want it to be long-term as well. So I'm thinking that we're gonna kinda alternate between the violas and the pansies. That way they'll just complement each other. I was gonna to try to put the pansies a little bit more towards the back since they're gonna be a bigger bloom. And then the violas more in the front. At this point, you really can't go wrong, y'all. I mean, just go in there and have fun. Who wouldn't love to get this as a birthday present? I would, right? Not only do you get gorgeous plants, you get a gorgeous container as well. It's fantastic. So we're gonna stick that in there. I may only need to have two pansies and then fill in, get you up there. There we go. And probably gonna use all three of the violas here in the front. All you're gonna have to do, again, maintenance when you're using a container like this with these plants is you need full sun. So what does full sun mean? Full sun means that you have a minimum of five hours of direct sunlight. So five hours all the way up to all day. Keep in mind that winter sun and summer sun are gonna be positioned differently in your yard. For example, Right here at the entrance to the nursery, we have right now planted them as full sun flower beds with gorgeous plants and they are thriving. However, in the winter, I don't get the sun there and we've planted pansies, violas there before and they just did terrible because they don't get the sun. So you need to have at least five hours of direct sun in there and then water, consistent water. Again, for us, with all the rain we have, uh, mom and will have to water this, um, you know, until the weather turns. And maybe, you know, once, once a week, once every, you know, at the most twice a week, because we've got such great soil in here with that compost that's gonna hold the, um, Moisture in there, I can't think. I about forgot to put my land and sea back on top. I get so excited talking to y'all, I forgot to put the land and sea. So I just take one of my little scoopers because most of these plants are nice and full. So we'll just go in and top dress. So by top dressing with that land and sea compost, it allows to help retain more moisture and it's just that other supplement of food for the plants, right? It's that slow release of food. So we go in there. It dresses up the pot. Not that you can see a lot of potting soil in here because I've got the plants are nice and kind of low and mounded, um, but you can just go in there and where you can see it on the edges in between the plants, put your land and see right there for sure. And we go all the way around. So yeah, water, consistent water, whether it's from you or the rain and then sun. And that is it. 
Again, if you feel like you, they're, they're on the struggle bus a little bit, you can certainly go ahead and give them some liquid fertilizer. The Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer would be a great option for you. And that will sustain them and give them everything that they need. This container will go through the spring. So it will be big and lush and beautiful for Mama. So that way, whenever she looks out or walks by it going into the house, she'll think of Aunt Bonnie and her birthday present and what a sweet gift that was from her. And maybe she'll even think of me because I planted it for her. <laughs> All right, my friends, so that is it. So Jerry and I are gonna haul this up to Mama's house. She's out with her gardening friends this morning. So I'm hoping she's not back yet, but if she is back, then we'll just go surprise. Here you go. And let her know that this is from Aunt Vani and a beautiful little fall gift for the birthday girl for sure. So get out there, check out your local garden centers, see what fun things they have. Remember, we are open Wednesday through Saturday, nine to three, now until mid-December-ish. Um, of course, don't forget, go ahead and get on the website and check it out, gardeningwithcreekside.com. We would love uh, to be able to supply you with some gorgeous plants and gardening materials. And yeah, it's going to be a, a fun, wild adventure for sure as we enter back into the e-commerce of plants. Um, so anyway, y'all, we so appreciate you, all of your love, support, encouragement, and y'all have a fun out in your gardens as the temperature changes and gets cooler. It's a great time to be out in the garden. We so appreciate you. Thank you for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.